Turns out that Jared Kushner traveled to Saudi Arabia and did not inform the US Embassy about his trip, which is incredibly unusual. According to the Daily Beast, Kushner met with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Let's stop for a second. An individual who ordered the murder of a Washington Post journalist, an individual who also ordered this this journalist to be dismembered. But let's move on. So he met with Mohammed bin Salman and King Salman to discuss US Saudi cooperation the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and economic investment in the region. Let me translate for you guys. Uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict is uh, saying to the Saudis, you guys are still supporting Israel, right? While pretending not to, yeah, oh, we're totally on board. Yeah, go ahead, dismember anyone you like. Uh, number two is, um, and by the way, the right-wing government of Israel, if they try to do peace, let's remember that we blocked that, okay? Um, so uh, number two is US uh, Saudi cooperation is, uh, you guys are gonna give me and my uh, step, uh, my father-in-law a lot of contracts when we're out of government, right? Right, good, good cooperation, dismember anyone you like. Uh, and then the last part is economic investment in the region. Well, uh, they brazenly talk about, the Trump administration does, well, Saudi Arabia is gonna need some uh, energy infrastructure revitalization and American companies are happy to step in. They're not doing much to hide their corruption except for hiding it from other government officials, which is the heart of the story. Right, it is the heart of the story, but there is one part that you might have forgotten to mention. The conversation definitely had a little to do with Iran as well. Now, according to Aaron Banco, the Daily Beast reporter who broke this story, no one from the US Embassy in Riyadh was in the meetings. The State Department did have a senior official in attendance, but he was not part of the State Department team in Saudi. He is a senior member of the department focused on Iran. So that's something that stood out to me. So Uh, one of the reasons that the Saudis and the Israelis cooperate behind the scenes uh, is one, they're both our our allies. And so, uh, and uh, if Saudi Arabia wants to get along with us, they're gonna get along with Israel. So that's part of the deal. And that's not a bad thing if we didn't have the occupation and everybody got along in the region, that would be wonderful, right? Second reason uh, that they get along with the uh, uh, Israelis is because they both hate Iran. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Israel uh, hates Iran because they fund Hezbollah and sometimes Hamas. Uh, those are two groups that give Israel trouble. Uh, and then uh, and Saudi Arabia hates Iran because they're Sh- Iran is Shia. The Saudis are Sunnis, those are two major sects in Islam. And they often fight in the region, including the proxy war in Yemen, where Saudi Arabia is cr- creating uh, monstrous war crimes. Which by the way, we're aiding and abetting here in America. So there was one other part of this trip that was unusual, it broke precedent. So usually when there is a US member of Congress or someone from the executive branch traveling to Saudi Arabia or any other country, the embassy is notified about it and the embassy provides security for that individual. A, the embassy did not know about his trip ahead of time and the Saudis arranged for security as opposed to the US embassy. So that's another part of it that was unusual. And remember, if this was a story on its own and if it were an isolated incident, okay, maybe some red flags, but for me it would maybe fly under the radar. But if you couple this with the fact that everything that's done in the Trump administration seems to be in secret, there's no transparency. Trump's meetings with Putin, he's had several meetings with Putin that were not on the record, that were incredibly secretive. He did not wanna have members of the US involved in those meetings. He wanted to talk to him alone. And so that's problematic, this is problematic. And look, we are currently working to provide nuclear weapon technology to Saudi Arabia. That's a giant problem. The Saudis helped fund the Sunni insurgency that got our troops killed in Iraq. And and that's leaving a sign that 15 out of the 19 hijackers on 9-11 were Saudis. Now we don't know that the Saudi government officially funded any of those guys, but different Saudi royalty, it appears it did fund some of that. So if you want to give nuclear weapons to anyone in the world, that at the very bottom of your list should be Saudi Arabia. You could say, hey, North Korea should be lower than that, or Iran should be lower than that. But wait a minute, did either one of those countries attack us on 9-11? So no, I would have the Saudis at the very, very bottom. And now we're thinking of giving nuclear weapons to them because what? They're friendly with the Israelis and they're friendly with Trump and Kushner and might give them business deals afterwards. It's gross. But 
To me, the weirdest part of the story and maybe the most important, I mean, it doesn't get much more important than giving them nuclear technology, but most important in terms of outstanding, weird, crazy, is Kushner doing the secret meetings with the Saudis. Mm -hmm. No, we, this is, guys, you have to understand how unprecedented it is. We don't have the president doing meetings with other foreign leaders, let alone Russia, with no other Americans in the room or with, and no American translator, that's crazy, that's nuts. Especially when you're accused of colluding with that guy in particular. Mm -hmm. Then Kushner goes over to the Saudis after they chop somebody uh, up and he has been accused of doing trying to get business deals with Saudi Arabia and he's like, okay, I don't want any government officials here other than that one guy that agrees right. with me, right? And, and I'm not even gonna tell the US, you're not gonna tell the US embassy that you're going to a country and then to have the Saudis provide security rather than US. It's amazing. Uh, it's it's unheard of. It's crazy. No, but it, the one good thing is if you're doing a civics class, if you're a civics teacher of civ civics 101, use this video because they're they're so obvious in their machinations. <laughs> yes. You know, they are their their cloak and dagger stuff is just so blatant that it becomes, you know, a really easy way for people to understand how government can manipulate the the citizenry. You know, if, if climate change doesn't completely destroy uh, the human population in the next, you know, uh, century, and we live to see the day that uh, Saudi Arabia has been nuclearized because of the U United States, I guarantee you that eventually there's gonna be some politician elected as president who's gonna have to go through the process of trying to convince Saudi Arabia to denuclearize because now they're posing a giant threat to sure. the United States and to the world. Like the, you look throughout history and there's usually, whether it's pertaining to the economy or something else, there's usually a Republican that messes everything up, right? And then a Democrat gets elected and has to clean up the mess and everyone gets angry that he or she hasn't cleaned it up quickly enough. Like, what are we doing? Why are we helping to nuclearize the Saudis? How does that make any sense? But there is one part of the story that I do appreciate. It is helped the right wing break all hypocrisy records. Totally. Because these are the same guys who like, we gotta ban all Muslims until we figure out what the hell is going on. In fact, Alex Jones and Roger Stone broke onto our set during the Republican National Convention. That's right. And the one thing that they said to us, most of all, Roger Stone said, we know what you're saying on air, nice try at intimidation. Uh, maybe I'll visit you. How about prison. everybody knows what we're saying on air? Like, <laughs> yeah. what? What are we hiding it? We think you're trash, Roger Stone. Okay. Okay. There. Congratulations. You're. I can't cuss, so I'm going to stop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, now you know what we're saying on air. Yeah. Okay. So, but the other thing that they said was, you're in bed with the Saudis. Now, get a load of that hypocrisy. Now, we have, in reality, before then, at that time, and now, always criticized the Saudi government. They're a fundamentalist extremist government and they're a scourge on, on, on planet Earth in every way. They're a dictator, dictator, dictatorial government. They do a lot of the same tactics as ISIS does, right? But they give us cheap oil, so everything is okay. So now, on the other hand, now the right wing have turned around and like, no, the Saudis are good. <laughs> Saudis are good and when Trump and Kushner are doing secret deals with the Saudis, uh, that might work against the national security interests of America. That's the best. That's why I always said uh, the Saudis are the best. Right wing, really? You've always said secret deals with the Saudis are great. Now you're signing on for secret deals with a Muslim fundamentalist dictatorial government. Okay, just be clear on the record. If you say this is A-OK, -okay, you own it. You own it. So. Given the fact that we now know that both Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump were not to be given top level security clearance, but they did get the security clearance because daddy helped them out. Can you understand why officials were concerned about giving them you know, this clearance in the first place? Yeah. I mean, considering the latest story with Kushner going to Saudi Arabia and it's of course clouded with secrecy. Can you understand why? You know. Some of the professionals that are left wouldn't want to give him top level security clearance. Now, the Saudis also gave money to the Clinton Foundation. It's true. And you know, the Clinton Foundation had a weak defense for it. They're like, oh no, the Saudis like to give charity. Mm, or maybe they were trying to influence the next president because they'd like to buy the president if he's a Republican or a Democrat. They don't really care. Uh, so imagine if Hillary Clinton had won. And then she's Chelsea Clinton 
The national security apparatus said Chelsea Clinton is a national security risk and should not receive top secret information. And then Hillary Clinton said, I don't care, I'm gonna give it to her anyway. Then I'm gonna send her to Saudi Arabia to do a secret deal that I might personally benefit from. And I'm not gonna let any other Americans in the room. Imagine what the right wing would have done. But in their infinite hypocrisy today, they're like, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, you should have this the, the, the son-in-law get clearance even though he doesn't deserve one and go do secret deals that might benefit himself and the president. Of course, and the people he should do it most with is the Muslim fundamentalist dictators in Saudi Arabia. What, 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 what were we saying all along? Was that what we were saying? You guys are the worst. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com slash join.